Okay, good afternoon. Today is September 9th. It's Friday. Markets uh, have been closed for about an hour now. It is your weekly take on the market. I will be your host. My name is Scott St. Clair. I am the manager of the Premium Product Group here at Investors Business Daily. Take a moment to read the disclaimer. It's important. We do talk a lot about stocks, strategies, et cetera. I'm not licensed. Uh, I don't, we don't offer buy, sell, hold recommendations. Nobody at IBD uh, is licensed, at least that I'm aware of. Uh, our sweet spot, our circle of competence is um, research, education. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. So market indices, indice, uh, some charts that I like to find, uh, talk about that I stumbled on through the week. Uh, industry groups, stocks to watch. Are there, you know, what stocks kind of falling on the radar here? And then uh, the quote of the week. So let's go ahead and um, jump into the market indices. And the first stock I want to, or chart I want to talk about, it's not an indice, but it is an ETF. It's ARK, A R K K. Uh, you can see that this rally right here, which barely even shows on the um, on the chart, is you know 10%, 40 to 44. Uh, this 53 down to 40 is uh, what uh, 13 divided by 53. So it's it's just been a. It doesn't look like it's doing a whole lot. It's trying to find some type of bottom possibly, but. Uh, the the swings are tremendous and they don't they don't really it's hard to see on the chart. So the Nasdaq was down like six days in a row, I think, two, four, six, seven days in a row right here. And this has been a pretty brutal sell off. Yeah, felt a little capitulatory a little bit uh, in, in in these last few days, um, but I don't know. I'm I'm just playing it close to vest. I'm not. I just don't think being bullish or bearish here is is, in, is the right strategy. It's just too hard to know as we sit here. I do know we had a couple of divergences. So the, the bond market made a new low right there. And NVIDIA, oops, for example, made a new low on the uh, right there. And that chip news. And the markets didn't. Uh, I'm just kind of grasping at straws a little bit, but I'm always looking for something. So maybe that's a good sign that because the, the bond market's been a huge catalyst for sure for the uh, this, the uh, industry or the indices performance this year. So maybe that's a positive divergence. Only time will tell. I want to get above all the moving averages. So we've got a declining 200 day. The 50 day at least is starting to turn up although the index is not that much above it. The S&P is above the 50-day, but again, a declining 200-day. And really, this is kind of the best ideal scenario. So um, it won't probably turn out this way, of course. But this is the low in the market at that point. There's a lot of follow-through days in there. And so I have to admit, I didn't think it was the low. I didn't know it was the low, but that turned out to be the low. But the 50 day is declining, sloping down. The 200 day is sloping down. And really, to me, the sweet spot to buy the market is right there, right there, uh, the market. Now, some of the leaders had broken out a little bit earlier, so you have to be watching those. But the all clear on the market really is right here. So you get an uptrend. Uh, it jumps above the moving averages here. The 50 day is in an uptrend, but the 200 day is still in a downtrend. So this turned out to be a head fake. False alarm there, comes down, sits on there, and then starts to rally again. And now you get the 200 day starting to turn up. If we go to the NASDAQ, it's even more prevalent, right? Starting to turn up and it's above the 50 and the 200 day. So this is, like sweet spot. So you missed the low by uh, one, two, three months or so. Um, but 
this boy, wouldn't it be nice to go back and start buying leading stocks right there? Uh, huge, huge runway. So I'm looking for something like this two, three, six months from now. I don't know. It's hard. It, it needs time for sure. The indexes need time to get a little sideways because the, and to up because I don't need those moving averages uh, to turn up. So if we go back to where we are currently, and that's kind of the case for why it's it's hard for me to get you know super excited. We were pretty oversold, down seven days in a row, got a little bit of a rally so far. We'll see, but I really want I want the market like somewhere in here, like right in there. Fast forward 60, 90 days from now, something like that. And if in and if I get it, great. And if I don't, who knows? This might just be. Uh, another head fake up and a new leg down. We undercut, see that kind of trend? I, had, I know a lot of people had like a trend line drawn on that. See how it undercuts that and just get shit, you know, it makes people think it's going lower and didn't. So you could get a fake out. And then, then uh, if it's heading lower, you'll get a real undercut like that. In fact, I'm going to draw a trend line because we don't have trend line alerts on the indexes. I'm going to draw one on the cues so that if it does that, um, I'll get alerted to that. All right, let's go to um, the charts or a couple of interesting charts to pull up. Here is a chart of uh, ARK, which is the flagship, um, ARKK is their flagship fund. And it's unfortunately, I know we're all human. I, I make these same mistakes, but people always pile in when, it, when the, the blue skies, nothing but blue skies. That was a famous song in the late 20s. Uh, <laughs> it was called Blue Skies, Nothing But Blue Skies, because everything looked really, really good right at the top. Uh, it'll also look really, really bad right at the bottom, which is why I don't know if this is, it has that same feel for a bottom, but there are a lot of things out there that are really, really bad. Energy is, is a problem. Europe is a problem. The war is a problem. Uh, inflation is a problem. Fed's a problem. So, you know, not, not totally impossible for that to be the case. But it's nice to see from a contrarian standpoint, the capitulation a little bit. Now, it's only one month of outflows. Uh, you, if I get this, 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 and if I can reverse these bars right here, uh, then I, that would be really not really bullish to me. So uh, they're, 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 nobody's really interested in ARC. It's not really on anybody's radar. And then a few people start to notice, and then it just becomes totally obvious that you can't lose. It goes nothing but up, and that's the top. And it takes them a long time to change their mind because nobody likes to lose. Yeah, but so at some point, the pain, the pressure, you just you just kind of just get you just can't take it anymore. And slowly but surely, people will start getting out. You might even get these types of bars near uh, the end of the year from a tax loss selling standpoint. Just move on. I mean, Arc's down sixty percent for the year. Uh, I I know they'll tell you their CAGR is, let's just say it's eight percent, or they've beaten the S and P, but. Unfortunately, even they would have to admit that most of the money from a dollar weighted average, most people are down. Uh, Fidelity, I think, did a study on the Magellan Fund when Peter Lynch was in, uh, running it. And if he averaged 13% a year, the, the average fund holder averaged 6% because they got excited at the highs and they got despondent at the lows and they put more money in when it looked great. And they Took, um, took money out when it looked bad. You just can't do that in mutual funds, um, well-diversified ETFs, et cetera. All right, uh, this is another interesting chart on Twitter I found from Sentiment Trader, the amount of puts being bought. And it <laughs> If the number's right, and there was a few people on Twitter talking about, you know, inflation adjusted, and there were some other things that uh, the market cap much bigger now than it was back then in 08. So, you know, I've said before, you can manipulate a chart a little bit the way you want to tell the story. But either way, it's 
if it wasn't three times in 08, let's just say it was two times or as bad in 08. And guess what? We get a you know a three day rally in Nasdaq up six percent off the lows in three days or four days. So not a surprise. See, I like to look for these things. Feel just I want to see if I'm on the wrong side of the boat, so to speak. If uh, if the boat's going to capsize, I want to make sure I'm on the correct side. And I, this probably wouldn't get me to like go long, but something like this might get me to definitely reduce and or just eliminate all my shorts when I see that type of, of extreme. So these two charts to me were telling me that, that there was a, a bit of fear in the market in the last few days. And that's that, you know, as, as present uh, presented with seven down days in a row on the NASDAQ. Go look at a chart. I think you'd be hard pressed to find seven down days in a row on the NASDAQ chart. All right, so let's, um, I'm gonna turn my camera off. I'm gonna jump back into uh, the industry groups. And let's go to open stock ideas, go to weekly review, industry groups. And I didn't look at it today, but I'm sure it's pretty similar. Let's go ahead and click on it. Energy solar, no surprise, number one. Oil and, oil and gas royalty trust is two. Energy alternative is three. Medical is four. Pipeline is five and retail super mini markets is six. It looks very, very similar. Uh, very quickly, do you see anything that's really, really jumping? It's moving to peril shoes, 176, 27, 18. Interesting. Uh, let's double click that. Let's look at that fairly quickly. Let's see what stocks are in that group. Nike, uh, Decker, Skechers, Crocs, et cetera. So that group is uh, starting to move up the food chain a little bit. Let's go back to the groups. Own gas in there. Uh, let's see, let's find something that's moving. Office supplies, not interested, not growthy enough for me. That's kind of how I would play it, something like that. Just go through, and a lot of these groups I've already looked at, like pollution control is kind of getting better, 92, 16, although it's 24, but it was moving up the food chain, so I'll, I'll look there. Um, so it looks the same. I just don't see anything that, that much different uh, from a, a group standpoint to, you know, that there's this big secular change going on. We'll have to wait and see. All of the energy stocks, well, most of them are setting up. They're starting to build bases. Uh, and when the market rallied last few days, it, it rallies because, let's go ahead and jump into the stocks. It rallies because, you know, Zscaler goes up 21% or MDB goes up 8% 8, 8 today or Shopify. How much is Shopify up today? 9%. Uh, docu 10 percent. Well, I've any, yeah, I went through those pretty fast, but do any of those charts interest you? Not me, no, thank you, not interested. But they're going to move the indexes, so it's it's a it's tough sometimes that if you see the index is moving, you're not participating, you're wondering why. Well, that could be the reason why you're getting these you know junk moves off the lows that are jamming the indexes. Uh, and that you know, ARC has some of that that stuff and that's why it was you know up almost five percent today what was the nasdaq up maybe two and change 2.17 so that's what's going to move that what's not going to move the nasdaq is eog well eog looks good it's building a base got earnings and sales in the right group but not really going to move the nasdaq although it was up four percent today uh val Oil and gas drilling. Surprising to me, this group is really bad because these there's a couple of their Val and Noble, which are setting up, and they have like the relative strength is 89 for Noble and Val is 95. 
well, let's solve this riddle. So what I would do is like, that's confusing to me, the oil and gas drilling being so poor. So let's go and open up the related information panel. Um, and let's go to, um, year to date up 61%, yet it's ranked 187. There must be one big stock that's really doing poorly. So let's go up to view stocks and in industry. Um, and actually, you know what I wanna do? I wanna see, there must be a really big one in here that is bringing the whole group down. HP, 95, Patterson, 94, Diamond Offshore, 51, not really. Precision Drilling, 92. I don't know. This is kind of an anomaly to me. I can't really explain why the group strength is so poor. Remember, the group strength is, is weighted too. And so a lot of them are, I would say, well, let's look at the three-month RS for some of these. So the three-month RS for Noble is 88. That's the three-month RS for Val 89. And how about HP 74? I don't know. I'm just going to have to put it in the, the box on who shot JFK because I can't, I can't figure out why this group is ranked so poorly uh, with setups and, and good relative strength stocks. So there, there, are, there are some stocks, some areas um, you know, that, that look viable. Uh, oil and gas production tankers, TNK is acting really good. This is one I own. Uh, Sting, I don't own, but I wish I, I did. Uh, to, to me, this was, besides down here, that's the point right there. I was in, on vacation at that time. I'm gonna use that excuse. I was in Europe when that happened. And um, so that's acting, acting pretty good. I, I've always liked these uh, natural gas and uh, FLNG is, you know, had a nice little shake out. Let's see, and how about GONG? And then last but not least, FRO, new highs. So this group's holding up uh, really well. So that's, that's one area that you could be um, invested in. Uh, the big boys, let's go through those quickly. Tesla acting much better, Relative Strengths 92, uh, up three days in a row, three really good days. Let's go to the weekly. I don't know. Tesla's kind of hard. I don't love that pattern, but it is Tesla. And if the market moves, it's going, it's going to go up. Uh, how about Apple? So it's lost a little bit of the relative strength luster. Um, and let's go to uh, Microsoft. So th these all look very similar and they're, they're I think, this is an area, to me, it's an avoid area. They're just all below the moving averages. They are great companies, of course, but they're just so big and overowned. And, and uh, I, 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 I know that there's an economies of scale somewhere. Uh, Microsoft, how many times can it double? I, I'd have been wrong in the last couple of doubles. I'd have probably thought it was too big already to double uh, again, but it did. For, so, but it just, just these are just huge behemoths overowned by the hedge funds. Um, so they, they, they're going to have a hard time really going. And I talked previously about the, the decelerating fundamentals. The fundamentals aren't all that great. Uh, was there any, let's see if there was any uh, breaking out today, anything of interesting? SQM tried to break out. Pulled back, and I know LTHM did the same. So these these stocks are hard to own. I I haven't owned the, this area at all in a long, long time. I just found them to just be too difficult. I once was in SQM. I might have told the story, and they're, it's you know they're based in Chile, and there was an election that the market didn't like, and the stock gap down like ten percent the next day, and that, that was it. I just won't go back to it, even though it's gone up <laughs> a lot it's you know they're in the right industry but i just i just couldn't couldn't stomach the, that happening again uh and let's look at n phase which i think is probably 
uh, how, how did it close today? Oh, it did close, it closed much better. I think this is probably the leader. If this is a new cycle, this is the leader, end phase. Uh, I don't think you can buy obvious pivots like this. And if you bought that, you might've got stopped today. And you wanna buy like here and here, pullbacks to the moving average. Uh, maybe if we're lucky, we'll get a pullback to, to this moving average. Never been able to handle end phase very well. You can see kind of how choppy it is, but uh, I have to admit, I think it's the, the leader. When, when the market on this day, I almost bought it that day because the market was down and end phase wasn't, which is sometimes it's the bill story. You know, I walked into the brokerage firm and saw control data up three and a half on a weak day in the market. I knew that was unusual strength. I bought that stock. I love that story that he tells in his book. And I, I've done that a lot. You know, if there's a, if there's a really bad day in the market and um, market starts coming back, I have a system on my screen that tells me which stock in my universe is hitting day high um, with flashing green. And, you know, I'll just buy that stock. I'll buy the, the one that just is acting that strong that day. It's got a I, I, it's got a tremendous track record. It works a lot uh, to, to see that. Unfortunately, the setup doesn't come that often. I really want, I want us to be in an uptrend. I want the market to gap down a lot uh, on maybe just some kind of random news or something, you know, end phase gap down today on a downgrade. And then when the market starts to come back, is when which stocks are coming back the fastest. Those are your, your best names for sure. So Enphase, I think, is the uh, the leader. There's some others, LNTH, uh, acting really good, and, oh, Suave. Gap down. I think it got a downgrade as well, uh, and then tried to come back. But they're all extended. They need some new bases and or pullbacks to this moving average. But those are names, I think, that if this rally is real, if this is the next leg uh these are the best stocks so far uh they, they've they've really shown uh their metal um so far all right let's um so let's get into the uh quote of the week maybe i'll turn my camera back on And I messed this up. I have the wrong um, slide. So you're going to have to bear with me. But <laughs> did I use this one last week or the week before? This is the one I want. What I do is I just, I just drag them out of, uh, out of order down below. And um, then, cause I'll just, I'll just get these ideas. I'll listen to a podcast. And I'll, oh, that's a great quote. And I'll make a slide of it and build it into my template and just store it at the bottom. So I have all these quotes of the week uh, that, you know, that I'll, if I need um, a go-to, if there's nothing that I've thought of. All right, sorry about that. Thank you for your patience. So this is Arn Olson. He's the founder and chief investment officer of Worm Capital. Uh, anybody that would name their hedge fund Worm Capital has my vote. I, I, I love the gall to do that, right? Um, I think there, I heard him on a podcast and there's more to it. There's a reason he called it Worm Capital. I can't remember why, but um, he has, he has, uh, a massive, at least at one time, a massive position in Tesla, massive by hedge fund standards, mutual fund standards. And I think on their website, I would do a Google, Google search if you're interested, and they have like a 200 plus page white paper on why Tesla's going to the moon. And as somebody who's been skeptical of Tesla for a while, I like to 
to to say, okay, where could I be wrong? Um, I haven't read all 200 pages, but I have perused it and looked at it. And, and because I'm open to the fact that maybe I'm wrong, you know? And so um, if you're interested in Tesla, if, if you're curious about that, it's something you can explore. But I like, I like his strategy, his style, based on the fact he's willing to take uh, big positions um, and actually, you know, sit with them for a while. I know he's, had, he's been in Tesla, if I, if I get it, for a number of years. So long-term investing boils down to two fundamental components, stock selection and position sizing. When, this, when I was at William O'Neill and the portfolio management side, uh, the, the, they used to say that there was like four pillars of performance was one thing we would hear on how, why had they done so long. And um, two of those pillars were stock selection and position sizing, concentration. That, that's, that's how they had tremendous years because they had the right stocks and they have a meaningful position in them. That's just truly the key uh, to, to, to having good performance. Um, we must emphasize sizing is imperative. Uh, we believe academic concepts around proper diversification can be out of touch with today's winner-take-all industrial dynamics. In our view, concentration in our best ideas at the proper weighting is our best chance at protecting capital, beating the market, and to, tempting to deliver performance worth paying for. Because I mean, you're paying them a fee to manage your you know, not only uh, management fee on the AUM, but uh, performance fee. So they got to earn their money. But I, I find it interesting he says protecting capital because if you have a certain amount of capital and you have let's say you have five really good ideas. These are your five favorite ideas, but you just can't bring yourself to be concentrated in all five. So you buy 10 stocks, 10 ideas. Well, really you're, you're, you're buying your five best and your, you know, your, your five second best idea. Why put money into your, into your uh, sixth, seventh, eighth best idea? Why not just put it into your first, second, third, fourth, and fifth? I've heard that a lot from mutual funds. You know, they kind of have to, but you know, if you like, why put more money or why put money into your uh, 50th best idea and 51st and 52nd, 53rd best idea? Why not just put it into the stocks that you own? So you'll find with the really good mutual funds like Contra, they, they, they concentrate the best that they can based on their mandates and things like that. So he has a very big position and has for a while in like Amazon and Facebook and Google and, and just has owned it, owned it. And, and it, it can get above kind of their mandates from the appreciation of the stock. Maybe they're allowed to, it can grow to a certain size as long as that's from appreciation versus, you know, money that you've put in. So Stock selection, position sizing, very important. Uh, the market direction obviously is important. You, you want to be in sync with the market. But we have we have the tools for stock selection. They're right here in front of you. Uh, position sizing is is hopefully you know what those kind of rules are, but that's that's probably even more important than stock selection uh, because it's it's hard psychologically. Um, to have, I think it's hard to have stocks go against you, but it's even hard to have them uh, have uh, a big position in a stock that's going for you. I experienced that. Like, it's like, gosh, this is working so well. It's not going to continue this work this well. Maybe I need to take some of this off. And, um, and it's hard to let winners run. That's not easy either <laughs> versus cutting losses. All right, so uh, this has probably been a really long video. I appreciate your patience. Uh, have a great weekend, everybody. Uh, our contact information, marketsmith at investors.com, 800-424-9033. Thanks again, everyone. Bye-bye.